everyone. Welcome to our last news and community spotlight of the year. I don't know about you, but I can't believe we're already here. In before the holidays, the Unreal Engine 424.1 hotfix is now available. Head over to the Epic Games launcher to grab the latest build and update. See a full list of fixes over on the Unreal Engine forum. The biggest names in the industry were decked out in their finest for the Game Awards, an annual global celebration of video games and the community at large. Many congratulations to the Unreal Engine teams who earned more than 20 award nominations in categories such as Game of the Year, Best Action Game, Best VR Game, and more. Throughout the night were also many exciting world premieres, including Sinuous Saga Hellblade 2 by Ninja Theory, set to release on Xbox Series X, and Counterplay Games' Godfall, set to launch with PlayStation 5. Check out all the great UE titles from the event on our blog. Servios continues their string of standout VR titles with their latest project, Westworld Awakening. Based on the critically acclaimed HBO show, you take control of an android host who begins to show signs of free will. In our interview with Servios, they share how they achieved high fidelity graphics, detailing their approach to lighting, shading, and particle effects, all while remaining performant. Get all the details in our interview. Europe's largest rental construction equipment provider, Remerit Loxum, launched TwinSight, a virtual world set in and around interactive construction sites. Built by real-time media and production studio One Reality, the platform provides an interactive learning environment for construction site personnel. Rather than sending them to an off-site training facility, TwinSight can be set up and used on-site, either on a traditional flat screen or in VR. Learn more about how TwinSight improves knowledge transfer while also providing a safe and cost-effective training grounds for hands-on personnel. Cars and environments are swapped out efficiently at the highest visual fidelity in Nissan's latest segments for the ICC Cricket World Cup, thanks to a pioneering workflow for configurable TV advertising powered by real-time rendering. Learn more about how they combined high-fidelity CG cars with photoreal CG backgrounds to create seamless footage that's indistinguishable from live-action footage. On over to our top weekly karma earners, thank you to Every Nun, Shadow River, Clayton Campbell, Cheerer, Max Payne, Ian Burgett, Clockwork Ocean, Thompson N13, Nebula Games Inc., and Cosmic Lobster. We appreciate all the support you offer on Answer Hub. First up for this week's Community Spotlight is Tribes of Midgard by Norsefell. With their last alpha test wrapped up, the cooperative survival game is heading towards its early access release in early 2020. Head over to their Steam page to stay up to date. Here you see a beautiful scene called Magic Shrine, which was used to explore new tools. Check out Florian's ArtStation page for more great projects and breakdowns on how they put these scenes together, with one on this scene coming soon. And lastly, we wanted to take a moment to update you on one of our recent epic mega jammers. Team Waddlesworth has expressed their intent to keep building Greg and the Giant Evil towards a full release. We wish them the best and urge you to follow them on their journey on social or in their Discord for future updates. Thank you all for a fantastic year. Happy holidays, everyone, and we'll see you in 2020. Hey everyone and welcome to the Unreal Engine live stream. I am your host, Victor Broden, and with me today I have a very special set of guests. <laughs> um, our CEO and founder, Mr. Tim Sweeney. Uh, technical business development, Zach Parrish, hey. back on the stream, very happy to see him. And fellow community manager, Amanda Shea. Hey all. It's nice to have you all. We are here to talk about the year that's been, um, what's been going on within for Epic and Unreal in general. Um, and just sort of share our, our thoughts and um, experiences, I guess, as well, I'm hoping yeah. to, uh, what's been going on here. It's certainly been a very, very busy year for us. Um, we were talking earlier, sort of like, what are we going to mention? Like, what are we going to pick out of all these things that there are to talk about? Um, and I think kicking it off with sort of GDC was our, our 
biggest beat of the year, that, or at least that we started off with. Mm -hmm. um, and there were several interesting uh, announcements. Um, one of them, I guess it happened just right before GDC, was uh, we acquired 3Lateral. Uh, they joined the Epic uh, family. Yeah, that's right. 3Lateral was the world's leading uh, team for creating digital humans, um, both for games and for movies. Um, you know, you've seen them on the Epic stage at GDC a, a number of times, but uh, behind the scenes, they've also created a lot of the best digital humans and a lot of the best games in the industry. Um, they just don't take credit for it. But um, you know, the goal there is to combine these world-class teams and make digital human technology accessible to everybody uh, using the Unreal Engine so that you don't need to be you know, an expert art team um, with a million dollar budget to create a completely realistic human. And um, we've been making a lot of progress on that uh, for the past uh, few years. And you know, what we showed at GDC was uh, the pinnacle of that so far, but we have a lot more in the works as well. Uh, the troll demo at GDC showed off a lot of uh, what's possible with uh, human faces combining this digital human technology together with ray tracing to create a really compelling scene. Yeah, we actually have that video loaded, so in case you haven't seen it, uh, we can go ahead and play the troll video. <laughs> I remember seeing the first footage of it, and it was just unbelievably yep. beautiful. I mean, it, it just looks like a CG movie. I, w I think the part that blew me away was the demo afterward, where they actually moved the camera in on the crown. Oh, yeah. And then it's reflecting the person who's actually behind the camera. I, I was like, OK, all right. <laughs> I work with this stuff every day, and my mind is still blown. Yeah. It's fine. It still feels like magic. Why don't you commentate on that? <laughs> right. I just know that the video ends. Right. It's cool. No, it's actually like my, my favorite part. Like the digital human stuff is amazing. Don't get me wrong. I don't try to. I'm, I'm not trying to take anything away. But the just the power of ray tracing in in this uh, in this setup in general, it it actually floored me. I was not expecting it to come through the way that it did. That's right. And you see all these different effects in their playing. You know, there's the subtle lighting with the ray tracing or the reflections and the human faces, the animation. It's kind of the magic of computer graphics. You overlay all of these different effects, and you see um, uh, you see a, pic a scene that looks realistic, and your mind can't really pick apart and pick it apart and see the flaws. Well, even just from like the traditional VFX standpoint, where you would have to layer f even the like the sparkles and the fairies, like you'd have to layer that with multiple passes that were all rendered out separately and then brought together in a compositor. And the idea that you're doing that in real time in a 3D scene, and it's just like the final pixels are just there, is it's crazy. Yeah, we had it playing on the show floor in real time. Yeah. You could actually go up and, and have a look at it in editor. Um, I was playing around with that for a bit. Yeah, it's very impressive. Um, and we've seen quite a bit of um, people in the community have been submitting and, and showing off some of the ray tracing work they've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, it's been very exciting to see. Um, and it's becoming more and more accessible. You know, The more notebooks that is people are purchasing that has RTX cards and um, more new gaming PCs that everyone's building. I saw somebody ask how many RTX graphics cards did it take to render that. I don't think we actually had a, any special setups this year at GDC, like the year before. For the, the Star Wars ray tracing demo, we had very fancy computers for that. But this time around, I think it was all consumer level hardware. Yes, it was one RTX, yeah. uh, one RTX card in the PC. That's very exciting. Um, something else that I know a lot, ev I would say, I, I'm not gonna say everyone, but a lot of a lot of the ones in the community are excited for is, is Chaos, which we also announced at GDC this year. Um, with a very impressive demo, you can stand in front of a large, <laughs> large screen and mm -hmm. um, sort of be one of the robots in Robo Recall, I guess. Um, and we are um, planning in 2020 to take that out of beta, um, and uh, you know, sort of uh, continuing on that. And what else is there? Like, I know uh, Michael Lentin has been here on the stream. Yep. He's talked very openly about you know, how they're working on. Uh, I don't think he's here in chat today. He's been in all of the other ones. Uh, yes. Yeah, all of the other ones that have been in chat. Um, and we also had Jack Oakman, who was giving us that uh, Chaos Fundamentals demo. Um, what, have, what have you guys experienced been with Chaos throughout the year? And I've been talking to a lot of devs who have uh, started playing with it, started using it. Of course, they're very eager to, uh, to follow all the features that we continue to add to it as it begins to grow and make its way toward uh, feature parity with PhysX. Uh, but the excitement out among the dev community has been tremendous. 
Yeah, and the development of that system has been very interesting. You know, for the first 15 years of Unreal Engine, the physics team was James Golding, one uh, super hardworking guy. Um, hey, James. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you know, since in the last two years, we've put together a really world-class team of uh, physics luminaries, uh, about half from the game industry and half from the film and visual effects industry. Um, you know, and uh, the mission is to create a next generation physics system that can do all of the things that you can see in movie VFX um, you know, of all of the different sorts of destruction um, and fluids, um, you know, particles, uh, rigid body dynamics um, in a way that's accessible in real time for everybody so that you don't have to choose between you know, an offline physics tool and something real time and game ready, but you get the best of both worlds. Yeah, you, you don't have to, because we have seen some some Houdini exports and such as well, um, of sort of major large-scale destruction, but it's always nice when you're able to work on it inside the same tool that you'll actually um, end up shipping it with. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, Jack Oakman was showing a little bit of the uh, uh, how you can record it using sequencer and then play them back, and even actually add um, uh, runtime physics, like custom version to the actual uh, pre-cache simulation. Uh, which is very exciting. I, I'm excited to see what comes out of that um, th throughout the community and, and internally as well. Um, we actually we have a video for Chaos, and so if you haven't seen this one, I think we're going to go ahead and play <laughs> if it. If you haven't seen this, where have you <laughs> been? <laughs> <laughs> so this was the uh, the demo that we were showing off at the show floor. Yeah, I was actually just playing a uh, Robo Recall unplugged on my Quest the other day. I'm surprised how how much that holds up. But look, I I want this in in the quest someday. You technically can using the link cable. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think the the really interesting part of this is there's a physics simulation that's doing extraordinarily detailed rigid body destruction, um, but you know it's also overlaid with all of the graphics and visual effects to create this complete scene that merges everything seamlessly. It also also with really amazing sound. Um, and we think this is the future of games, right? You you see games that have a little bit of physics and destruction, and then games with huge open world environments. So I think the future is having the best of both worlds, being able to you know have scenes like this in a major game that's unlimited in scale, and imagine the sort of multiplayer implications for that. Well, I feel like it wasn't that long ago when you would see a demo that looked like that. Somebody would be saying, oh, we're going to render this offline in the cloud, and then we're going to pipe it out to your console. Mm -hmm. And that never really became a, a major thing, but now we're starting to actually just see it. Like, it's just working in your games, and that's super exciting. Mm -hmm. I still want to see the Chaos arcade machine, though, like a David yeah. Masters or something. <laughs> like, I want the big video just screen destroy everything. and two big ridiculous <laughs> guns and just start destroying stuff. It's so it, good. Yeah, no. Because playing that actually on the big screen there at uh, at GDC this year, it was. Did you do it on the stage or? I on didn't the get show to floor? do it on the stage. They wouldn't let me into the stage, which is fine. I didn't play it on the stage either. Yeah, it's fine. I, I didn't have the special pass, but I did go to the booth and play it like 19 times whenever they would let me. It was <laughs> it was fantastic. They're like, where's Zach? We need him for a meeting. He's like, he's, oh, he's, he's blowing up buildings <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to try it, but maybe maybe at some point. Um, we also showcased some new advancements within using Unreal Engine as a cinematic tool. Um, to you know, make movies, short films, and, and or, or just cinematics for games. Um, and I think kicking that off with just playing Rebirth um, would be would be a, a pretty cool, t you know, set the tone for, for what we're going to talk about. I think Greg has it queued up for us. Nice, good timing there. <laughs> <laughs> right. So here we have some uh, photorealistic assets scanned by the Quixel team, um, mm -hmm. now part of Epic. Um, you know, they, this is the world's greatest 3D object scanning group, and their mission is to uh, go around and scan all of the world's objects um, and to create digital replicas that are uh, indistinguishable from reality. Um, you, know, you now see the Quixel Mega Scans in the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Um, it has free downloads for use with Unreal Engine. Um, and the goal of this team and all of these efforts is to use the resources that we have here at Epic to build up awesome libraries of content that we can share and all developers can use in their projects. Yeah, as soon as those went free, we saw tons of people being like, I need bigger hard drives yeah. and SSDs <laughs> to handle all of this stuff. Yeah, that's right. And you have <laughs> billion polygon assets <laughs> yeah. here. This is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> no. But they're absolutely beautiful. And, and Rebirth is an incredible feat. Just the combination of the help with um, Houdini and Quixel 
It was just a combined efforts. This one in particular was actually, like, it was almost torturous because I, I watched it, and of course, visually, it's striking and it's gorgeous, and there's just detail upon detail. But then underneath it, I was like, I, I just want to watch this movie. Whatever this trailer is for, I want to go see it. Right. Yeah, if you're curious, um, more curious about in depth and how it was made, we uh, we did two live streams this year, um, mm -hmm. one with uh, Galen from Quixel, and uh, another one with um, the Houdini team, and they went went into depth how they actually altered some of the assets and um, how they did the trip to Iceland and yeah. uh, a lot of cool details around the process of, of creating it and the timeline. It was it's very stunning in just how short amount of time they were actually able to put that together. Um, and then during the uh, the Epic Mega Jam, which was the first jam we had after the, um, the Quixel announcement or the acquisition, uh, we saw a big increase in the amount of people that were using um, Mega Scans for the projects, which is really cool. Uh, just having access to that at your fingertips and easily accessible, it's just making making the quality just skyrocket, which is really cool. It's exciting we're able to find ways to kind of lift the bar for everybody, mm -hmm. kind of raise all the boats and make this stuff accessible for everyone to start playing with and making amazing looking stuff. Everyone walking around with my smartphone and like taking pictures of bark and, <laughs> and, and, and leaves <laughs> just, you know, to try to get some, uh, do some homemade photogrammetry. Um, we touched a little bit about ray tracing earlier, but uh, just this week we actually released uh, a new sample project, um, the Artris interior demo. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a, is um, a co-made together with Pasquale uh, Cianti uh, and several people here on the team. And it is a showcase to show sort of how we can build interiors um, for architectural visualization um, or other types of sort of design presentations. Uh, and we also have that video queued, unless you haven't seen it, which I think less people have considering it just came out this week. Please Pretty go ahead. Fresh. And yeah. And this, if, if you don't have an RTX card and you're still interested in, in checking it out, there are actually two versions. Um, I believe it's the same project. So there's one with um, bake lighting uh, without RTX, and then there's the, the fully ray traced version. Yeah, I'll have to try a side by side. Yeah, the way that it captures reflections, especially you know, not perfect. Glossy reflections that aren't perfect reflections is really quite astonishing. There's also the area lights, um, which contribute to a much more realistic lighting. Yeah, RTX is going to change the world, and uh, you know it's going to become. Right now, it's at the leading edge, but you know by the end of next year, it's going to be a commonplace technology that you can expect standard on on the computers and consoles. It's been impressive how rapidly it's it's been picked up too. Yeah, and uh, I, I expect, you know, it's new technology, right? So people have to learn how to use it and, and also how to use it artistically, right? It's not just turn it on and it looks beautiful. Um, you need to learn how to work with the tools. Um, and so there's definitely a bit of a learning period um, going through it myself. <laughs> um, well, the nice thing is it, it's now more like actually learning how to light a scene, like in, in real life. If you need like a big soft fuzzy light, like you can bring in an area light just like if you were lighting a scene for photography, where you bring in a light box instead of like a point. You can start thinking that way, and that's really impressive. So more of a like a cinematographer and, and how, yeah, yeah, how lights it. So it's what you're saying that it's easier to um, apply it to like your real life skills transfers. You, you could get a book on how to light a scene for cinematography or mm -hmm. photography, and that would apply just as well in Unreal, and that's really cool. Yeah, and I'm sure there's plenty of people who are now looking at you know starting to use real time tools um, for their professions. Possibly they they might not even have thought of it before, and now that the technology is available and makes it possible for them, um, they can find some. So new ways to, um, whether it's their hobby or a career they're looking for. Um, we also did a major announcement at GDC, which was the Mega Grants, um, which has been an ongoing. Um, and we don't have any uh, big announcements, but they're coming very, very soon, uh, is what I've been told. So uh, look for we're looking forward to that. Or an update, yeah. Update, yeah, yeah. Update on uh, what's been going on with the Mega Grants. Um, and it's been it's been exciting, um, a lot a lot of applications. Um, moving on, something that you might ha not have um, seen already through our news pages is that we announced on Real Fest Europe, um, speaker submissions are open, and so if you're interested to 
um, share what you're doing with Unreal Engine, um, please go ahead and apply. I believe we uh, can go ahead and, and paste the link here in just a bit. Um, the dates are, oh, I, I had the dates. It's in April. Uh, <laughs> I had the dates. Let's show where they went. It's April 29th to May 1st okay. for 2020. So and is it in uh, Prague. Prague this year as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in Prague. exciting. Okay. Yeah, cool. so uh, well, what was really cool this last year is that um, we recorded all the, those talks. So there, I think we were trying an effort of getting 50 videos up on our YouTube channel and being like, here's all this information. And so hopefully you've had time to at least watch some of those. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite an undertaking for all of them. Um, but yeah, for Unreal Fest Europe this next year, we're actually combining our events. So um, some of you may have previously attended Unreal Academy and or Unreal Fest Europe, and now it's going to be a big games meets non-games because a, a lot of those principles overlap, a lot of those skills still apply to a number of different industries. So sure. it'll be an even bigger networking event. Um, and again, lots of tracks, but we're still looking for speakers, so definitely apply if you've got something to share. Yeah, awesome. Um, I guess moving on throughout the year, uh, make the, the year, ha year has felt pretty short, but now I feel like <laughs> we're making it feel even shorter. <laughs> <laughs> we just went back through GDC, and I was like, I just left San Francisco yeah. like last <laughs> week. <laughs> and the next one is about to happen yeah, again. No, it's yeah, no, it's, it's just an endless loop. Back, back to the booth. Yep. But uh, maybe the construction will be done this time. No. <laughs> no, it's, it's San Francisco. No? It's always going to be under construction. <laughs> Forever. It's, 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 it's never done. Yeah, um, but moving on then, uh, E3 was another wonderful event this year. Um, mm -hmm. Both me and Amanda were there, uh, running around the show floor, trying to hit up everyone who was working with Unreal Engine, and yeah. we started showcasing. We played a lot of really cool games, um, and we also um, did the Unreal E3 Awards this year. Um, we'd like to do a couple of mentions, or honorable mentions, I guess, to, to the, um, the people we picked. Um, for Outstanding Original Game, we had Creature in the Well. It's just a beautiful game. It's Amazing. such a unique, yeah. I love that it's like a pinball, it's like first third person pinball, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, <laughs> with a giant sword. Yeah, yep. yeah. such a cool <laughs> art style and yeah. Yeah, very, very original, um, hence the, um, uh, the award. Uh, and um, Oh, I forgot his name, but they were at um, Dev Days Seattle, mm -hmm. um, and they did a presentation. He was part of the um, uh, the roundtable. Um, yeah, and they were talking. That video is available online if you want to go and check it out. There's some other cool talks there from Dev Days, actually. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, for Unreal Underdog, uh, we had uh, Midnight Ghost Hunt as the winner, uh, which is a uh, very exciting title in the community. And when I, I met with the community manager there at E3, and when he told me how big the dev team was, I was very impressed because there were two developers and nice a community yeah. manager. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what they're able to accomplish, it looks like a AAA game, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess that that style of uh, the, the prop hunt, uh, but taken with a little bit of a uh, different different theme uh, and tying it into sort of them existing as ghosts, yeah. it's it's cool. Um, we also had uh, our eye candy award went to Final Fantasy uh, VII, the the remake. Um, which is being made in Unreal. So beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I finally got to play it. I'm. I can't wait. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have that day one. I, I miss my old Final Fantasy Seven days. I love that they brought it back. I love the way it looks. I love that it's on Unreal. <laughs> it's. It's a great title. I'll be like, where's Zach? And it's like, oh, he took. <laughs> it's, 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 it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it took the week off. It's Final Fantasy time. Yeah. For someone, I, I didn't actually play the original, so. Just yeah. wait. It, the new one is so different now. Like trying to go back, I, I, you'll find it probably didn't age as well. So they've really modernized it in every possible way, not just visuals. Like it plays like a modern game now, and it looks beautiful. So yeah. twofold. Um, biggest buzz went to Borderlands Three, which definitely had a huge presence on the show floor. <laughs> and I remember that wall of roses, and I actually I walked up and. I sniffed it. It's like, oh, they're actual roses. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because yeah, because it, it, like, it, it was difficult this? to tell because it was, it was huge. Um, we got to play the game there. Um, it's pretty amazing, and we have been playing the game since. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot to do in that. I'm never obviously. upset with more Borderlands. So. No. And you gotta ca you gotta get them all right. You want <laughs> the gazillion guns. That's. <laughs> it's a yes. Game. Yes. That dopamine shot of getting another cool gun when yep. you play the game. That's, that is what <laughs> it's all about. <laughs> mm. uh, and driving some of the new vehicles. Um, okay, yeah. Most engaging went to the Outer Worlds. Yeah. 
um, which I've also been playing recently. Yeah. Um, quite magical to it's it's a, a new universe, um, a new storyline, um, and everything we love about RPGs. Yep. Um, it's in there. Been having a lot of fun. To me, it kind of feels like Borderlands with story choices, more story choices, and so I'm like, mm -hmm. this is everything. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, the guys at Obsidian did a fantastic job it's with this game. Fantastic, yeah. Folks at Obsidian. I did see that someone was able to beat it in 12 minutes. Uh, in 12 minutes? 12 what? minutes was the, is is the record speed run. How does that work? You so just go right to the final boss? They picked, um, there's a, 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 I think it, I'm not sure if it's called this in game, but like the dumb character storyline. Oh. <laughs> and he finishes conversations faster than any of the other Because nobody wants to talk to treats. him. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> sure. Um, so that, that was choice number one. And then he... You should watch it. It's only 12 minutes, which is why I watched it. I know I didn't watch speedruns of such large games, but uh, and then he's jumping over fences that no one thought could be jumped over. Nice. And, um, <laughs> just just do breaking it in every way possible. I just wonder how many minutes were spent before you figured out that you could do it in just 12, right? Like the number of hours that you had to <laughs> spend exploring the landscape to get to that point. The more interesting question is like how you feel as a developer. Like you, you have this game that you've spent <laughs> years and years and years developing and teams and teams of people and all this talent and all this work just for somebody to make a video. But here's how you can plow through this in 12 minutes and go on to the next thing. So you can watch mm -hmm. a commentary on the, on the speed <laughs> run. It's actually on YouTube. Uh, and it's quite interesting. It's a good insight also into you know how designers think when they're yeah. um, when they're making games, and then seeing someone break it, and, and the comments they have of like, oh, we worked hard on this, and like we should have thought of that. So it, it can be a good resource uh, for for learning. Um, oh yeah, and then um, I guess that was E3. I don't know if there was anything else to mention around there. Uh, the Fortnite booth was amazing as always. Um, you could ride a llama. You could dance. Uh, there's plenty of stuff going on. I think it was one of the most cold. I felt like a fly standing in front of it, mm -hmm. uh, just like looking at all the pretty lights. Um, and then, to in my opinion, w one of the, the cool events of the year is SIGGRAPH. Um, and there was quite a bit of uh, announcements made. Um, we have been running this um, sort of a promotion for f throughout the year. Not necessarily promotion, but um, it's not a project either. But uevirtualproduction.com. Um, it's a resource site if you are interested in virtual production um, that we announced at SIGGRAPH, and it's been going strong since then. There's a whole virtual production guide that, y that is available online that you can dig into um, if you're excited about what it takes to, to, do s to work with some of that technology. Um, we, uh, we prepared a video uh, for from the virtual production stage that we were demoing around SIGGRAPH time, if you wouldn't mind playing that for us, Greg. Yeah, so what you're seeing here is uh the view through a camera of a scene that's a combination of a very small set, which just has the dirt on the ground immediately around you, with uh, giant display panels behind, uh, LED panels. And as the camera changes view, you see uh, that the panels update so that the camera is always tracking a completely faithful uh, recreation of this combination of virtual and real objects. Um, catching the parallax of the camera's motion. Yeah, exactly. And so it brings back to the movie set the magic that you know existed before computer graphics came along where a director could look through the camera and see the final shot. They could do all of the tweaking and adjustments right there live, understanding what the final scene looks like. Um, you know, for the last couple of decades, though, that's been lost. You know, the old fil film actors on a green screen, the director doesn't really know what's going to happen. So you get all of this footage done, and then at the very end, they add in the computer graphics, and they hope it works, but uh, they can't really fix problems at that point because it's too late, whereas here, it's all live. Um, well, this is definitely the future of movie and television production. Um, in a way, it's economizing and increasing the quality of the, you know, the products is just astonishing. You know, you've seen this on The Mandalorian, um, and it's coming on a lot of other projects in the future. Um, it, we're getting a glimpse of what future production looks like, and it's all built on real-time 3D technology derived from games. Well, it's such an elegant way to, and I, I don't want to call it simple, because obviously there's a lot to it, but it's it's conceptually such a simple way to solve a really complex problem that's been around for years. Like, you go back to episodes like one through three of the Star Wars trilogy, and you watch the making of, and it's just actors in a giant green room surrounded by people in green suits, and it's like, they can't get into character, they can't really see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so you solve that, but then, like, you look at The Mandalorian, right? Mm -hmm. Which I've been loving that. Baby Yoda is, is my <sighs> new hero. But, like, you watch Mando walking around in his, like, steel, basker steel uh, yeah. outfit, 
and like the reflections are all from from his environment are like actually there. They don't have to fake any of that mm -hmm. because it's all taking place like on this real time panel all around him at all times, and it's mind blowing. And it's it's great that we're finally to a point where you could look you could come up with a solution like that which i'm sure somebody thought years ago like what if we just projected something onto a real screen back behind them so we could use depth of field and everything to make mm -hmm. it look like it's really there but now we have the technology to make that and make it real and make it uh in in real time at a level of fidelity that you could use final pixels on a movie screen that's right and seeing the result is just it's it's absolutely crazy i love it so mm -hmm. much yeah and there's there's already we're starting to see some work um we're starting to see some work tailoring off of that, um, and there will probably be a very interesting live stream next year, um, where we'll be, be showing off a little bit what's, what's been going on around the community um, mm -hmm. using us, using that technology. Um, we um, there was something else there. On virtual, I mentioned the guide. I mentioned the site. Um, maybe there's something else I wanted to touch on briefly. Perhaps we'll get back to it. <laughs> For all of those features that we built, um, you know, in partnership with actual live movie film production, sorry, television productions, they're not in the engine, uh, available for everybody to use. Underlanding.com, go down. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shameless plug. Um, we, there's also a, sort of looking back at history, we actually showed off the Sistine Chapel uh, demo that is actually available on Steam, I believe. Uh, you, can, you can go download it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's a recreation of uh, Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, where, for, if you're not aware, he, he drew um, or painted. He didn't, he didn't draw. He probably draw, drew first, but then he, he painted the entire chapel. Uh, we prepared a little reel for that as well, if you haven't seen it. It's very pretty, so I want to play it. So if you have access to a VR headset, you owe it to yourself to check this one out. Uh, I was actually just in Florence uh, back in October and I had the opportunity to go see this in person. And I waited to look at the VR version until I'd actually seen it with my own eyes. Um, and then I, I got home and checked this out. And it's absolutely stunning how true it is to actually being there. I mean, you, it's still VR, right? It's still, you still have a set of goggles on your head. But it's surprisingly close. I, I was actually really amazed at how much it felt like you're in the Sistine Chapel. Well, and they were able to capture so many of those details and they've sourced them from yeah, publicly available Yeah, it's not photogrammetry. They, they, they didn't walk in there yeah. and just they weren't take allowed the camera because they're not allowed without, you know, obviously no, the, some people The data already existed. Yeah, it was yeah. all sourced from online libraries and piecing all of these elements together and yeah, like comparing it to the actual Sistine, obviously, but you get that experience without all the people. Which you, is well, you, you, okay, so there, there's not <laughs> as many people and there's not the security guard droning silence. Silencio, which is really disturbing <laughs> uh, when you see it, when you hear it in person. There's also the like you can get up close and yep. really experience the paintings, which sometimes you know there's no way you can get the up on the scaffolding and be like, what does this look like? You know? Yeah, I, absolutely. And like uh, <laughs> the narration, which kind of goes through each section of uh, of the paintings and the frescoes and, and kind of tells you what's going on. It's it's a really worthwhile experience. You should definitely check it out. Yeah. Um, doesn't run on the quest just yet. No, um, but maybe one day, <laughs> if you're lucky. Um, f moving on from from Sigrath, um, which is happening next year as well, and hopefully, I, uh, hoping I, I, ca I can be there this time. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't able to make it this year. We uh, the NAB show um, occurred this year, and uh, that's I, I learned that that's actually when Emmys are awarded uh, for the. Uh, animation, uh, 3D and animation uh, or section. Broadcasting. Broadcasting, yeah. And I learned it's the National Association of Broadcasting show. <laughs> um, and Epic was awarded an Emmy, uh, which was quite the achievement. Um, that's yeah, that's amazing. It, I mean, it just shows how uh, how this game technology is now taking over the real world. Um, and you see it, film, television, radio, like it's affecting all aspects of life now and the way we're we're building things and uh, experiencing them. The way companies are designing products, it's uh, it's quite astonishing. And you know, the software suites that are used in um, film uh, and especially television show production, like the Weather Channel's mm -hmm. uh, set, is all driven in real real time now. And the the several major tool suites that they use and that have all moved to Unreal for the three D rendering portion of their product. Yeah, and there's uh, also we released a um, a sample for. Um, 
that kind of, of scene. Uh, it's available on the launcher under Learn tab. Um, if you're curious to see how that's set up, um, not going to do the download it now again. That's <laughs> 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 that I was. Um, yeah, it's, it's exciting stuff. Seeing how things are changing. And what's inspiring it too is like a lot of our community or our partners help drive a lot of that, right? Like it's not just what we're doing here in this building, but or in our studios across the world now. But uh, it's all of the people that are working on it outside of these studios, and it's like what they're able to do with their video broadcasts. We mm -hmm. see beautiful things from. Um, the Weather Channel, always stunned every time one of those comes out, and you're like, mm -hmm. I don't want to be in that natural disaster. <laughs> <You know? laughs> those have been really cool <laughs> um, And a number of those, uh, a lot of the broadcasts, I'm forgetting the name of it now, but the sports ones out of Brazil, or so many amazing things that just help drive our technology, and we can help you know, use that to inform other developers, and, and everybody collectively supports all our initiatives. And it's it's cool and magical to see all that sort of come together and help push the whole industry forward. Yeah, magic. <laughs> this is kind of <laughs> what I like about it. Magic. So, yeah. Um, moving on, um, the uh, feature free marketplace content um, has been a very big, generous contribution to the community. Um, we're seeing all the excitement. I think there's at least three YouTube videos um, after every announce of people going over. Um, uh, what's what's available out there, um, and they're free for life once you grab them. Um, and the we're continuing that for uh, for next year. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, awesome to be able to support the community building some of these things and helping to fund them. Um, and the Infinity Blade content yeah. also okay. was released. That was uh, that was cool. Yeah, you know, the game's been out for a long time, and the team had stockpiled all of this amazing <laughs> content. So right, well, let's just. Upload it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually just saw the arcade cabinet again at uh, Dave and Buster's. Um, I don't remember which trip it was anymore. They're all kind of <laughs> a blur. But I walked in and right like front and center was the big Infinity Blade, like drag your finger on Aww. the screen thing. That's fun. It's mm -hmm. still fun to play. I've yet to, I haven't even been to Dave and Buster's yet. Is that, is that a mistake? <laughs> uh, you have to define mistake at that point. <laughs> okay. Uh, mistake of not making the plans. It, it could be wise, actually. Okay. All right. All right. Maybe I'll get to experience it one day. <laughs> it's possible. We can we can think okay. if you want to. All right. But All right. Um, in addition to the Infinity Blade content, we also got to continue another year of the free content that we've been doing on Marketplace. That was a great way to sort of celebrate that initiative that's been going on. Um, we've had millions of entitlements for that free content, so it's really great that everyone's coming and grabbing it, and we hope whether you're using it directly in your products or at least using them as references to build your own assets. Um, you know, it's five free items every month on the marketplace with some additional permanent content that's free forever. And so, I don't know, it's, it's a cool resource. Make sure to take advantage of it if you aren't. And we really appreciate that we're in a place that we can do that for our community. Absolutely. You know. um. Moving on, I said that <laughs> six times now. Um, Hashtag moving on. Yeah, well, there <laughs> it's just like one big thing after another yeah. that happened. Um, so it's, it's good to go through them all. Um, Quixel, I don't know if I have to say much much more than just Quixel, but uh, that that just happened. It doesn't feel like that long ago, anyway. Yeah, that's right. Look, this this is the world's best team for scanning digital assets, um, and uh, and we think this is going to be really important in the future if. Every game developer has to recreate every piece of digital content for their game, then we're going to end up being very limited, and you know, just the cost of producing games will be impossible. Games will have to be small. Whereas if we can create these huge shared libraries by scanning all the world's content, then we can make the development process much easier, make it easier for a small team to create a really big, big game um, with amazing quality assets. And you know, these Quixel assets aren't just. Uh, Final assets. You can also take a Quixel rock or a tree and adjust it and move pieces and parts around and build your own assets out of that. So it's, you know, just also a starting point for creating your own, your own, you know, ultimate compositions of different types. It makes me wonder if at some point we're going to get to the, the the level where we have the one piece of content that everybody sneaks into their project, like like the content version of the Wilhelm scream. <laughs> <laughs> Where you'll you'll be like crawling around the castle, and there's that same rock that you swear you saw on yeah. some distant planet somewhere. It probably like, already exists. We just don't know which piece it I is. I probably <laughs> haven't been paying close <laughs> enough attention, but yeah. 
maybe one of the little statues or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just sitting in a corner. Um, yeah, and there will be a, a continued effort to um, m making all the assets av um, available uh, through the marketplace and um, and, and, and bridge oh, as, yeah. uh, as well, which is a, uh, a, a great way to modify or work with the assets mm -hmm. um, that exist or alter them completely from scratch as well. Um, 424 just released, um, and it's called. We just pushed a hotfix. Uh, God, man. yeah, it's a dot one now. Yeah, it's a dot yeah. one. Yeah, it's available. Um, go ahead and get the hotfix if if you're already working in 424. Um, and we did a so, so, sort of a large change that um, I don't know if anyone was expecting, but DataSmith is now part of the engine and is now one tool. Um, Unreal Studio is so, as a separate uh, solution is no more. Uh, yeah, you want to say anything more? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess that's it. <laughs> if you're working with, um, you know, using all the different CAD softwares and you're um, modeling all, all those environments, and then you can just bring them into the engine and uh, show it off in real time. It does help answer a lot of questions from folks that are, are getting into this for the first time from the non-game space, because there's no longer a need to have like a separate piece of software to do a thing. It's just go get the Unreal Engine. It's going to allow you to grab your assets from whatever you built them in and just bring them into a real-time environment. Yeah, if you notice, there's this real crossover that's been beginning um, between real-world stuff and games. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, we partnered with McLaren to create completely realistic carbon fiber and anisotropic paint materials to represent a next-generation McLaren car. Since then, they've used the Unreal Engine to uh, iteratively design and wind tunnel test their cars so that without ever producing a model, you know, they can just go through cycle after cycle of refining the product to create the world's most aerodynamic sports car ever. But yeah, so that was all serious enterprise work. But um, then you know, a year later, uh, that McLaren car shows up in Rocket League as a yeah. playable car. Yep. Um, and that's just one example of crossover. You also have seen a lot um, in Fortnite. You have characters like the musician Marshmallow coming into Fortnite, or the Infinity War crossover, or the Star Wars universe uh, making its appearance in Fortnite. And I think what we're seeing is the beginning of the blending of all different forms of media where you know, in the future, maybe you start to see IKEA furniture in games, um, and maybe new architectural works debut in the game world before they're even built in the physical world. And uh, you know, instead of instead of companies outside of the game industry, like brands, reaching you know us normal consumers by running ads, they start releasing stuff into games. And instead of just being bombarded with annoyances, now we're experiencing this content. It's fun. It's interactive. It's live. It's a big event. Um, I think this is, a, is sort of the, the thing that science fiction writers have pred been predicting with the metaverse or the Oasis. And we're seeing the very beginnings of it now um, you know, live with some of these games. I definitely felt that way watching mm -hmm. the, uh, the Star Wars event take place inside of Fortnite. That was, that was actually pretty incredible. Yeah, I think that's and that's just the beginning. Yeah, right. That was uh, Epic spending a lot of time building that in partnership um, with Lucasfilm and Disney. Um, but you know, in the future, you know, Fortnite's creative mode is evolving in a way that you know you game developers watching the stream will be able to build games standalone using Unreal Engine or build you know bigger and more interesting experiences within the Fortnite universe. And you know, we can build an entire economy around that so that there are new ways to games and to reach players uh, that uh, you know don't really exist in uh, mainstream form now. And you see a little bit of this in Roblox um, in the way that there's this big creator ecosystem around it, but uh, yeah, I think that's yet to be done in a AAA large-scale uh, way, and that's going to be very interesting. It's a bit like how you can make education fun, mm -hmm. you know, um, by making it interactive and, and not just like a textbook that you got to read through and then do the quiz. Um, Maybe like that kind of advertisement is fun, right? Like in terms of Star Wars, you're not, you know, you're happy that you get to be a part of that and see it all um, and get to interact with it and then play with lightsabers, which I think is. <laughs> <laughs> is that the real key? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's it's really all about getting a lightsaber and swinging it around. But like in just in general, the for the past however many hundreds of years, we've had some form of advertisement in the human space. It's always an, a passive thing. Like some ad is placed in front of you and you read it and you look at it or somebody tells you a thing, go buy this, go eat that or whatever. But uh, the idea that that is starting to make its way into the interactive space where it's not really just like, hey, go see Star Wars. It's more like, hey, here's this experience that it basically is gonna become Star Wars around you. 
and while we're at it, we're gonna show uh, we're gonna show you like some clips of it, and you're gonna hear some exclusive content of it. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see that grow and be a lot of different properties and a lot of different things. Yeah, and the best part of this form of advertising is it's not advertising. You don't you're, even know you're, you're not, being yeah, advertised. It's not forced to. on you. You're able to participate in it if you want, and it's really awesome. Yep. Um, Another uh, part of 424 um, was the uh, Apollo, Apollo 11 demo, Mission AR. Um, have you folks had a chance to try it? I have not. Oh, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it is. And that's really pushing the HoloLens technology, you know, which Microsoft has been uh, launching at a small scale. Uh, HoloLens is an awesome platform. First of all, it's an open platform. Microsoft is committed. It will be open to any developers to build their own games, to distribute however they want. Um, you know, in the way that the PC ecosystem itself mm -hmm. is open, but the hardware itself is phenomenal, and to be able to see, you know, be immersed into some combination of the real world and this augmented world um, around you is amazing, and uh, uh, thankfully we've just released the entire demo. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Greg, would you mind playing the video for us? Yeah, this was, uh, this was created in partnership um, uh, with the, uh, oh shoot, what, John Knoll and team? Um, yeah, this was created in partnership with John Knoll and team, um, and, uh, uh, shoot, what's uh, the writer who wrote the d really awesome book about the Apollo missions? Um, yeah, they were, wanted to create a, a technical demonstration of how the rocketry worked and how the mission was accomplished, um, you know, a very accurate technical recreation. So you have some very detailed models here, um, and you know interaction, you know through the whole lens is uh, you know it has outward facing cameras that scan your hand positions, so you can reach out and interact with the thing. I uh, can't wait. You can wait. watch a little tiny Apollo lander land on your <laughs> coffee table. <laughs> I want that so bad. It's actually like a really endearing experience. It's one of those one. It feels a little magical because it's space, yeah. and it was a real event. But then to see it all take place on the table, we yeah. got to demo in the other room, and it was just like, oh, and it interacted, and it felt really good, too, which was... Well, I, I've been to the Huntsville Space Center, like, I don't know, 10 times in my life. I always love going and seeing, like, the, the NASA stuff and looking yeah. at all the rockets and everything, and I'm dying to actually see that one in person. Up to now, I've only seen the videos. Um, turns out the HoloLens 2 is way too expensive to let me play with it, so... Uh, but I'll get a chance to look at it. Oh yeah, yeah. They're starting out uh, rolling out to enterprise customers before uh, gamers and game developers, just so they can iteratively improve that tech. Yeah, I think that's a smart strategy. You know, I still believe in ten years we're gonna live our lives immersed in you know a combination of the real world and immersive 3D, using you know goofy AR glasses we wear with us everywhere. Right. I can't wait till they look more like this. Though. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. I know. That, that's really what I want. But we get down to it. Why do people? Why do? Why do I wear glasses in the real world? It's because it's effectively I'm blind. Uh, <laughs> you know, <what> like, <laughs> yeah, you no, guys I, are totally blurry. Yeah, I have no I idea who you <laughs> where I am <laughs> with my, my glasses. But uh, you know, I think in the AR world, everybody's going to eventually feel that way. That there are going to be all of these amazing augmented, augmented layers to the world. Yeah. Um, you can only see with them, and that's going to be the future of entertainment. But it's going to take at least a decade of continuous improvement and releasing more and more refined versions of these products, starting with HoloLens 2 and Magic Leap and going on from there um, to get to the final version of this product, like the I, you know, iPhone version of this thing, which is ready for a billion users. Right. Yeah, and there's, um, even for us who, who don't wear glasses, um, I've, I've heard some comments around sort of like, oh, but if I don't wear glasses, you know, um, like it, it, it's going to hurt my eyes because I'm always looking. And something that I think a lot of people aren't thinking of is that when you're actually looking at stereoscopic content, you are no longer focusing at a fixed depth at all times. And so once we're actually able to be productive inside AR and VR, wherever it is, um, your eyes will actually relax a little bit more and you might feel less eye strain throughout, uh, throughout your day. Yeah, and you know, I think AR is going to be especially awesome for content production because right now, 3D editing is really hard because you have a 2D monitor and a 2D mouse surface, and you're trying to manipulate 3D, so you're constantly switching axes and using all these different tools. It's, it's kind of a natural, whereas with AR, you know, when you have super high resolution scanners and input devices, they're all six degree of freedom 3D. You're going to be able to reach out and manipulate things, move around them, just like you were building a real world object, but with far more powerful computer tools at your disposal. I think it's going to make content creation much more approachable for ordinary people. 
I think so. I, I think the only thing I'm uh, a little apprehensive of is I'll find out exactly how much my hand shake when I'm trying to manipulate things <laughs> in real life as opposed to moving yeah, the mouse. I'm trying to do that like delicate movement. And right, but I, I can't wait. I want us to get to that point so bad. Mm -hmm. Some haptic feedback gloves that makes them uh, with an exoskeleton that makes yeah. them not shake. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that steadies our hands. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just stack on the hardware. It's fine. You, yeah. can, you can solve it with hardware. Solve we'll hardware. all have just giant suits on and call the day. <laughs> Eventually, I mean that's that's the uh, the ultimate um, immersive VR dream, right? Um, and then, um, not very. It feels like it was yesterday, but we just just ended the 2019 Epic Mega Jam, um, which mm -hmm. me and Amanda had uh, the fortune to to run and play all the games and judge them. Um, we saw, so we had 460 plus submissions. Yeah. Um, I actually made it in A before the deadline. Record breaking jam. Wow. So it's our five year anniversary of Game Jams or <sighs> Epic Mega Jams. So yeah. um, it's kind of like the birthday celebration and it's been a lot of years of jams, thousands of games that were have been made over the last five years and to have, you know, yeah, approaching five hundred in a single jam was <laughs> quite a feat. But it was exciting to have over, you know, a thousand developers in the single jam and I don't know, there's such a a pure and creative experience that it's it's a lot of fun to see the community come together and then just some incredible content that came yeah. out of the jams. There, there always is, but I felt like everybody really stepped up to the plate this time. And we actually prepared the um, sort of the little trailer that the winner submitted uh, as part of their submission. The game's called Plan Plan Planted. Uh, By Pixel Collective, yeah. yeah. So I, I actually went to the web page for this game, and I love that the first comment on it was, okay, and how much time did you really spend on it? And they had the, like, the, the developer had to come back and be like, no, this was just a seven-day jam project. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's all this was. And that in and of itself is mind-blowing. Yeah, so it was a team of five artists that worked on it. Um, they've chatted uh, with us a little bit after the fact. And so it's, um, they're actually a professional artists that took some time off because they all wanted to jam. And a lot of the lighting choices and things like that um, were made to hide some of the more like 3D, you know, That's if they're game reusing, right? You're <laughs> reusing a lot of textures or models or things like that that they've built up quickly. And so they've tried to position them in ways to like hide them. And then mm -hmm. by using this heavy atmosphere, they can kind of cover up some of the, the extras around the sides. Yeah. And, that's game development. It's yep. cheating your yep. style. <laughs> exactly, exactly. What, what, it's not necessarily what you're showing, it's what you're hiding away from the audience. <laughs> I think the quote he used was, when in doubt, use God race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, I'm an Astroneer fan from way back, and uh, with the moment I saw a spacesuit and found out your character is actually a plant in a spacesuit, I was like, sold. I'll play that game right now. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah, right? it took me over 40 minutes to complete it, so. Nice. Um, it's quite the accomplishment. We also had... Um, uh, it cost me a catastrophe, which was our um, our, our second place finalist. And mm -hmm. the theme, or not the theme, the theme was down to earth this year. But we had a special modifier category that was space cats. Um, a few years ago, Amanda filled me in that there was a lot of space cats happening around one of the jam, and they were trying to guess the theme. Yeah, we were like, "What do you think the theme is?" And they're like, "It must be space cats." And chat blew up, and uh, a lot of some of the games that year incorporated space cats. But we figured we'd do a little toss to them and. And this time, mini space cats. we saw over <laughs> 230 of the submissions <laughs> had space cats in them. <laughs> so wow. They were delightful. Though. We've seen every <laughs> single version of a space cat that you could imagine. Don't drop a challenge like that. <laughs> it was amazing. Surely you have not. <laughs> they, were, they were fantastic. And there were so many cat puns. It was yeah. such a delight. Pertonium per <laughs> was one of my favorites. Perfect. <laughs> yep. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, had to, you had to get a pertonium. We, we helped... Internet's quest for more cats. There we go. <laughs> Mission there <you> accomplished. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, a few more careful descent as well, um, yeah. and just the range of sort of. Um, that's what I love about game jam scene. You know, something like Planta that's like just stunning. You know, almost triple uh, A level artwork, and then there's a game like Careful Descent, which it's one button, and you're just moving one thing, um, and how. You know those different takes of um, of ideas can still make almost equally satisfying games, um, and that you don't need a, an enormous studio to try to m make you know make a fun game um, yeah. using all that. Um, the Epic Game Store. It's been quite a beat over here. 
Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it launched uh, late last year and has been growing to an amazing size. Uh, we're going to share a lot more information about it at GDC, but uh, we've, we've gone at a much faster pace than expected and had a lot of success with partner games of all types. Um, you know, we've done some really amazing Fortnite tie-ins, um, you know, with Borderlands, for example, mm -hmm. you buy a game and you get some, uh, you buy the game on PC and you get some items in Fortnite. Um, similarly with the uh, Jedi Fallen Order promotion. Um, and it's off to a really good start and we've got uh, some really great partnerships coming in the future. Um, of course, we also have critics uh, out there. Uh, we have a dedicated subreddit uh, <laughs> uh, to Epic right now. It's called our Fuck Epic. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I guess that's a uh, yeah, that's a result of uh, going against a strong competitor. You know, Steam who has uh, you know hundreds of millions of of gamers on board, um, and you know, people uh, some folks don't want to switch, but we've been holding up, and uh, we've been really happy with developers' support for the store and our efforts, and just general desire to see the whole industry move forward away from you know, these 30% taxes everywhere, uh, where these stores make more money from our games than we make ourselves. Um, we're really trying to upend that, um, starting with PC, but over time spreading to more platforms and get to a point where developers once again make the lion's share of the profit from their games. Yeah, I've definitely been um, happy to see all the free games. Um, I've definitely uh, one of my favorites was World of Goo. I, I got to play it again uh, <laughs> several years ago. Last time I touched that game, uh, just the resurrection of them, um, as as well as all the new ones that are coming out. Yeah, yeah, and that's been a great great way to bring on new players, make people aware of existing games that have been out there for a while. Um, yeah, you know, it turns out we can go to developers, pay them uh, money for the right to release their game for free on our store for a week, um, and then go out and give those games to gamers. Um, and we can bring in new customers at our store uh, more economically than actually paying Facebook or Google for ads to annoy people to come to our store. So <laughs> we've been really happy with that. And we see a lot of really great ways we can partner with developers uh, to you know, help transition the whole industry into this you know, new, new way of store, uh, doing stores, which is much more developer friendly and developer centric. And uh, Epic Online Services um, is, is, is coming along. Um, and it will sort of tie into that as well. Um. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The, you know, in building Fortnite and Paragon, um, we've built up a lot of online backend services like accounts and friend system and matchmaking and all of these different things. And um, unlike almost, unlike every other game before, uh, Fortnite has built these systems in a way that interoperates across all platforms. You know, there's Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, PC, Mac, um, iOS, and Android. Um, all working in these services and all working as a single platform. Um, and so the Epic Online Service Initiative is our aim to make these services available to all developers um, across all platforms without any restrictions on store at all. And so we're really hoping to overcome the walled gardens that exist everywhere. You know, Xbox players on the Xbox Live can only have Xbox players as friends, they can't communicate with others. Even on PC, you know, where you have Steam, Steamworks is locked to a PC. You can't run it on other platforms, and you can't actually even run it on a PC game that's uh, distributed through a competing store. And so with EOS, you know, we have a set of services that are available as a CSDK. So they work in Unreal, they work in Unity, they work in third-party engines, and we're completely ag engine ag agnostic with them. We're also making the services available um, for free to developers so that, um, you know, it doesn't Paying for operating costs isn't the developer's problem because we find the benefit to having people come in and be able to use the Fortnite friend system and add their own friends um, to the friend system as players play their own games. It, that's worth more to Epic than um, the money we might charge you to uh, to use our services um, because you know more friends in the system means more opportunities for games on our store, more opportunities for Fortnite, more opportunities for everybody. Yeah, you know, so the aim is to work with everyone to produce this you know, the world's largest gaming friend system, um, you know, across all platforms in a way that's open to everybody and isn't taxed. Um, already in Fortnite um, and Dauntless, across Fortnite, Dauntless, Unreal Tournament, Paragon, this shared set of games that currently use our friend system, we have 1.6 billion friend connections. Like, that's a staggering <laughs> number. This is approaching the scale of a social network already, and that's uh -huh. just the very beginning. Um, you know, Dauntless was the first third-party game launching using all the Epic Online services. Um, so Dauntless supports crossplay across Xbox, PlayStation, and PC um, so far. Um, and 
you know, this is the very beginning of opening up these services to a much wider community. And you know, stay tuned over the coming months um, for more, more news. We have a lot more in the works. It's really awesome and goes beyond the bounds of what you expect from a normal set of online services. Okay. Yeah, maybe there will be no more little console war battles of which platform, which new platform are we going to get. We can all just, you know, pick our favorite and, and still play together. Yeah, you know, that's been the most exciting trend in the whole game industry over the past two years. It's been the opening up of Sony and Microsoft and all of these platforms so that now you can play one game with your friends across all platforms. A developer can build a game once, ship it across seven or eight platform families, um, and have their entire audience able to communicate together. Um, so it works now. Fortnite proved it out. Um, and, you know, other games are starting to come along with this. Call of Duty launched uh, crossplay um, and think other games are in the works, uh, but you know, with the services we're providing, we just make it really easy. Just mm -hmm. uh, plug in, play with one SDK, and you get this on all platforms. And I think eventually it will tie in um, to to the editor as well. Oh yeah, totally. We uh, yeah, we're building more and more collaborative features in the Unreal Editor. Um, and over time, we really want to expand that into a way where you can like, you know, be video chatting with other people. You can see their screen. They can see yours. Um, you can live edit content and coordinate doing things, especially when you're in a distributed development environment across lots of locations. So these are all things we're thinking about and working on in the background. Just remember what I wanted to say about virtual production. <laughs> 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 that makes sense. That's a decent tool. <laughs> it's it's the, the VR scouting tools. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah <laughs> that you're able to be in a shared multi-user uh, session um, using a VR display, and you can actually you know scout the shots that you want want to do for the movie. Um, came out of that. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> the multi-user editing is, is certainly exciting, right? And there was a lot of, when we did that live stream, there was definitely a lot of comments around sort of like um, because of how the server stores all the data, um, that you can sort of do a, a recovery um, in case they, uh, you have a crash or something, your computer locks up. Um, and it, it's, it's cool how that collaboration, it's almost like real-time source control. Yeah. Like you're, you're just mo moving assets around, seeing what the other person is doing. It's like, save. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, there's no pull, there's no push. Scrub back a few minutes and, and go right back to where you were, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I d didn't actually, s I haven't seen anyone do that yet. I didn't know we could do that. Um, that's exciting, yeah. Um, was there anything else you wanted to touch around the services? Uh, no, the, uh, the SDK is out. People can start grabbing yeah. it. I've already been uh, pointing a lot of devs that way. Uh, I do not remember exactly which services are already live. I think matchmaking's already in there. No, no, no uh, not yet. Let's not see. Yet. Most of so uh, we've been focusing our early deployments on a, a bunch of partner games. They're kind of beta testing the stuff mm -hmm. privately. Um, so like Dauntless launched with the full feature set of all the Epic Online services. Uh, we'll open them up soon. Um, stay tuned for some news. Uh, but uh, next year is when these services really come into the mainstream. Um, you know, expect adoption across hundreds or thousands of games um, and to be able to really scale them up to a huge scale uh, throughout next year. So stay tuned for some news. Yeah, we'll make sure to do a live stream uh, oh, yeah. on, on that when it's when it's available. And yeah, it's funny. Epic services working together with Unreal and also Unity developers yeah. and can all use this stuff. So we're trying to bring everything together and just uh, help every game developer however we can. It's exciting times. Yeah. Um, Twin Motion was another um, big announcement this year. Um, for those of you who aren't available, Twin Motion is sort of a, a scaled down version of the editor um, that might be a little bit easier to use if you're not familiar with sort of the, the suite of game development tools. Um, it allows you to create very high quality um, artist scenes um, or, or sort of design visualizations. Mm -hmm. um, it's available on the launcher. Um, the 2019 version will continue to be free. Um, and then um, we have more news coming later next year, what's going to happen with the next ver version of Twin Motion? Yeah, but it's a very accessible, very easy to use kind of tool, and I think that's what's nice is um, there, so uh, Tian Chow, the community manager for their team, has been running some really great challenges, monthly challenges, and it's like create this uh, sunset or this fall scene, and a lot of them are just beautiful. It's really mm -hmm. crazy what people can spin up and make just really quickly. Um, and so, if you know, for those that may feel like engines a little daunting or they need something a little quicker than that, then it's a really great tool to kind of lay out some scenes very easily. 
Yeah, and you, you see, Epic has actually done a number of experiments with different editing environments. We have the Unreal Editor, which is this big tool set for AAA down to indies. Um, then we have the Unreal Editor VR, which is still in somewhat experimental phase, but has some really interesting tools. Then there's the Twin Motion tool for architectural pre -visualiza visualization. And then there's like Fortnite Creative Mode, where 100 million Fortnite gamers can build their own stuff um, in their own environments with a super easy to use tool set that works on console and mobile platforms too. Um, I think what we, we're trying to do is experiment with a lot of different ways of editing from like super high end professional all the way down to mainstream for everybody. And ultimately we aim to have a continuum of experiences where uh, you know, some of these projects probably blend together and merge at some point in the future. Yeah, um, for, for someone who you know, is excited. It's a good good place to get started um, if you want to see what's possible. I love seeing just how he's supposed to move on splines and have people in cars walking around. Mm -hmm. um, felt a bit like magic. <laughs> um, get into our favorite games of the year. How many have we played? I know I played over a thousand because I judged <laughs> all the games. <laughs> <laughs> you win. All right. Okay. Cool. Next. Uh, um, I I got really into Borderlands when it dropped. Uh, as far as, as big uh, EWE titles, um, I did play a, a bit of The Outer Worlds. I have to be really careful about my time and big RPGs sink <laughs> a lot of it, which I think is kind of silly because I end up investing that time into games like Borderlands anyway. Uh -huh. uh, but that was probably my biggest one this year was, was BL3. I played too much Slime Rancher, um, <laughs> and then I saw oh, Fortnite. Yeah. Fortnite now tracks your playtime. I saw my playtime was 27 days. I was like, really? really? Oh. <laughs> I spent that much time in the game? But yeah. It does sneak away from you. Yeah. <laughs> I always find that number embarrassing on any game that it gets exposed on. I, I remember the first time I punched the command into World of Warcraft way back when, oh, like no. for, was it Slash Played or something, and it popped a number up, which I'm not going to repeat out loud. Like, you could, if you had uh, been doing something productively, you could oh, yeah, have no, a no. PhD. Absolutely. Right. Now you have a PhD in World of Warcraft. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's that level of bad. Yeah, it's that concept of ten thousand hours, right? Yeah. If you hit that in a video game, then yeah, go. It's like, yep. oh, I, I am an expert in this thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did play uh, yeah. a bit of Slime Rancher. That was a really good one. Um, what other games came out of the store? Uh, so we started doing the uh, releasing a free game to kind of help build awareness and mm -hmm. hype for another game coming out, uh, which is how I ended up discovering and playing Subnautica uh, off the Epic Games That's Store. Awesome. And, uh, of course, uh, I mentioned earlier, like, I got into uh, Astroneer back in the day, and Subnautica is really, like, a really nice underwater extension of that. And it was the first game that I played, because uh, there's a lot of games that take you underwater, mm -hmm. but it was the first game that made me feel like I was scuba diving. Because, like, I've dove before, but it, it actually gives you that feel of what it's like to swim around underwater and, and, like, try to deal with breath and everything. And it was, that was a fantastic game. I can't wait for the next one. Because you give you that overwhelming sense of being alone, even if you're surrounded by people. Yeah, but I love that about I love games that make me feel alone. Like, those <laughs> are fantastic for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, my favorite games is Borderlands. Like, I hate to keep beating that drum, but it's yeah. one of those that yeah. I've been a longtime fan of that series, and it always looks stellar, and just the, the, camp the campy humor yep, and all yep. of it is delivered so nicely. And well, you get different things that are different games. Like, Borderlands right. is, is my go-to for when I'm hanging out with my friends and we all want to sit down, have a few drinks, and shoot at stuff and make fun of each other the whole time. Uh, when I want to be alone, it's a game like Subnautica, or more recently, um, Death Stranding, which is coming soon to the Epic Games Store. Nice. Uh, so it's, it's uh, I do enjoy that kind of get away and have, like, find your zen space type of gaming as well. If you'd like an alternative, there is a game jam game called Cat Stranding. Cat Stranding, perfect, <laughs> of course. That you can follow mm. up with. <laughs> are, are they space cats? Absolutely. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> of course. I played quite a bit of Borderlands as well, so yep. still beating the drum, but um, one another game is also a U4 title that I had a lot of fun and we were playing um, a few friends, was The Cycle. I'm not sure if, if you had a chance to try it out yet. I didn't. Um, it, it's on the Epic Games Store. Um, it's it's multiplayer. Um, it's a mix of PV PVP, and so you're sort of doing um, you're fighting monsters, but there are also other players in the world. Uh, very much in drop shits. Yep. Go kill stuff. Um, it's super cool. Um, yeah, a lot of games. Yeah. Oh, Jedi Fallen Order. Played yeah. A bit of that. Oh, I got to play that at uh, at E3. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's quality. It feels like a, a good Star Wars movie. Yeah, the lightsaber yeah. 
fights almost looks like they're choreographed, but you are actually the one. Yeah. Um, no, they, they got their lightsaber combat down. Yeah. Like, it feels right. Which told me I would die in real life. Like, I would just lose. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I'd, I'd, I'd lock my own legs off, like, real fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, like playing through it and it was like, <laughs> oh no, like trying to parry and like blast the shots back and like, no, I, oh no. I have a couple of like the, you know, the toy lightsabers yeah. that actually light up and everything and like they're, they're fun for taking poses with, but don't try to swing them around. You're going to hurt like yourself. like George or Michael video from Arrested Development. Just or Star Wars crashing. Kid. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's embarrassing. Do they make the noise or do you make the noise? Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I plead the fifth. Amendment. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah, I, I read something online that the actors, uh, they had to teach them to stop making the noise because it was coming through in the footage. Oh, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> there is none, right? Yeah. There, um, that's fun. I, I, I know every time. It's just really difficult to not pretend like you're actually oh, hearing yeah. the lightsaber. No, I, I read that article. It was like in uh, uh, the, the Last Jedi, the lady who played Holdo, she kept saying pew pew when she was shooting her gun. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> it's that kind of thing. You just, you get caught up in the moment. Yeah. Good actors, right? I guess that's the <laughs> um, I guess it's fun to dwell on the past, um, but moving forward, um, there's always new exciting things on the horizon. Um, for 2020, um, I think we mentioned uh, Unreal Fest Europe already. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely excited to see as many of you there as possible. Prague's a beautiful city, uh, been there many times. Um, also, another point, if you are excited about uh, or would like to submit for speaking at the event, please go ahead and do so. Did we paste that link already? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. It should be there. Uh, I also went ahead and I posted a YouTube link for the preview of Twin Motion 2020, if you're, if you're inter interested to see that. Um, we, the Video Game Awards um, just happened. Uh, there were several uh, Unreal Engine games that were announced. Uh, one of them which I wanted us to play the trailer for, um, because it is Absolutely gorgeous. Job I don't even know what to say, so I'm just gonna be quiet and let Greg play the trailer. It's all real, real all real time rendered. Yeah. That's mind blowing. She does just such an amazing job. Imagine trying to, trying to build a game like this without a massive library of assets to start with, with digital humans to, to use as foundation. Oh, it's going to be years of R&D just to get started. Yeah. Amazing. That's what's happening, and that's just the very beginning. Yeah. This is the first truly next-gen stuff we're seeing, and there's a lot. A lot more coming from a lot of partners. That's also the first time I've watched that trailer without the audio on. I was going to say that. I still have goosebumps. Because yeah. I know... Mm -hmm. I know like, no, the it. visuals like themselves get you in, but the, in the back of my head, I was like, I would totally go to this concert. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever she's singing, I want to start headbanging to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, you should not dub music videos over top of this, uh, this yeah. video. <laughs> but. Yeah, and there, there were... Um, the worst being used, I guess, is next gen, you know, for mm. the next generation of consoles. Um, there was another UE title announced, which is Godfall. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, not to shy away from Ninja Theory and Hellblade, yeah. because that is amazing. Um, no, the folks over at Counterplay have been crushing this game. I am so hyped for this one. And it's been described as a looter slasher, so mm -hmm. it's like, cool, sign me up. I'm there, day mm -hmm. one. I'm on this. Well, it's, yeah, because then that was announced for PlayStation 5, and so it's like, we we're so excited to see Godfall for PlayStation 5, and then Hellblade 2 for 
um, Xbox Series X, and it's just like, this is what the future is going to look like, you know, and it's really cool. And and I don't have to haul my my desktop PC into the living room just to get to play it on the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, the, uh, yeah, I saw the, the photos of the, uh, the new Xbox, so kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you going to play the Godfall trailer? Uh, I don't no, know don't if we can do that up. Oh. No. Okay. okay. Um, so that's some homework for you all. I was yeah. excited. Go check it check out. It it's, out. It's, it's awesome. pretty awesome. It's on YouTube. It, it doesn't look too good when we're playing YouTube videos and oh, capturing no, no. that screen I and playing back. We, we like them in... Yeah, yeah. Full res, full quality, full frame rate. Yeah. I totally get it. Yeah. But no, that game looks absolutely amazing. I love the armor style, the the visuals, the the weather effects in that trailer are just so good. I can't wait. It gives me real um Stormlight Archive vibes. I, I if, if you're a Brandon Sanderson fan, if you've read that one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, we However, there's a small clip of Godfall in what we're going to show next. And for the stream, we wanted to debut a, uh, a little scissor reel we put together of anticipated uh, Unreal Engine games of 2020. And so if Greg's ready, we can go ahead and roll it. I just saw this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I have to ask you. Yeah. Clouds never look better. There it is. Yep. Yeah. It's, This one actually. Fair I'm enough. Not Fair sure. Enough. I think they're listening. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're watching what you say there, dude. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Can you hear us? <laughs> oh, uh, we're getting the, the hand wave from Greg, so they can definitely. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> These are blasting by so quick, like it's hard to comment on them. <laughs> oh, yeah, disintegration. That looks so good. Backbone. Aesthetic. Yeah. Oh, I've been waiting for that one. Mm -hmm. I think we're all following that Twitter page. Yep, yep. Right, it's going to be too close Yep. Oh, nice. It's a good image. Now, the range of genres in and of itself is really impressive. The range of genres, the visual styles. Yeah. Um, I feel like we've really drifted away from there. There used to be that like characteristic unreal look, right? Yep. And <laughs> not that yep. some games still don't have that, but we're seeing so much that's kind of coming away from that yep. and really making their own art styles and really unique visuals that, that yeah, that trailer, any from like Minecraft to Hellblade and everything in between, you know, it's really cool. Well, yeah, and, and, and all the way across development, like not just in the styles, right? Because like uh, I still remember using UE2 and UE3 back in the day. Like I remember UDK <laughs> where it's like, cool, you're going to make a thing. Let's, let's start with Unreal Tournament. <laughs> yeah. um, and it, it's just so cool that it doesn't feel that way at all anymore. And it, you really ha do have kind of the, the open field blank canvas and mm -hmm. so many different types of games are coming out like right now. It's, it's crazy. Just tweet that post process. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Fixing Is that the post. it? That's yeah. all? <laughs> yep. Just do yep. The post. That's all it takes. Um, <laughs> make game button maybe announced for next year? No? Uh, yeah. I've always wanted uh, like the Unreal Visual Assistant. Unreally. Yeah. Unreally, <laughs> yeah. make me a game with zombies. <laughs> so, uh, no, make it more fun. <laughs> you can, like, negotiate yeah, with it. Some AI UX. that doesn't do quite what you want, and <laughs> yeah. you always get like, <laughs> slightly close, wrong game. <laughs> yeah, I think it's baby steps. The first step will be making the blueprint node that does that. Mm -hmm. So just be like, make on fun. on begin play, start game, or be, like make fun game. Then like there's a zo like add zombies, and you just <laughs> have like a chain of little commands. <laughs> Building blocks. We can start it in blueprint. That's fine. I think I did see someone make it in Nether Utility Widget. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. That was actually make, as soon make as those came out. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was a, a legitimate dev question. You, this is going back years and years ago. Um, somebody actually asked on our, like, ask the, uh, the devs, how do you make a character fly and punch like Batman? And, like, that was their legitimate question, dev yeah. to dev. Like, how, and 
we were like, well, I guess you could talk to Rocksteady. <laughs> uh, but, but for a while, we, we didn't have the time, of course, because that's a lot of bandwidth. But what we really wanted to do was make a blueprint node that would just be like the Batman node. And you just add that to your character blueprint, and they fly and punch <laughs> like punch. Batman. It's like, well, it's simple and unreal. You just add the Batman node. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And then you can go edit if you want to yeah. be Superman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why would you do that? Well, he flies and punches too, right? It's true. It's okay. true. And technically, Batman doesn't fly. Okay, no, no. We'll, All right, we'll, we'll yeah, that. Let, let that go. <laughs> um, before we want to go ahead and wish you all happy holidays and, and all of that, um, Tim was nice enough to sign a couple of these uh, Unreal Engine ornaments here. And so for today's survey, if you go fill it out and drop your email in there, uh, we will go ahead and pick three lucky winners. Um, and you'll all get one of these um, yeah, Pick them up and show them. Ornaments. Oh, Ooh. yes. Kind of blend into Christmas here. ornaments. Oh, here. look at this. Yeah. If you worked with the engine, you should recognize them because I think they're in. Yeah, it's the little <laughs> material demo thing. Yeah. 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 Call it a. Oh. What, would you, what do you even call it? I was going to ask that before the stream, but what I came up with, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to mention on the stream. So. <laughs> Oh. Okay, no, we're just going to let that hang. That's right. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, let's just go run on by. It's not as bad as, as you, you're, you're, you might be thinking. Um, but yeah. I, I'm going to go with like a, a, a shader sphere. Ma okay. A shader sphere, material plinth. Uh, there's, there's a few things yeah. you can do, yeah. I guess. We'll work on it. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll name it. <laughs> Come up with something. Herb. Um, so, yeah, go ahead and survey. <laughs> and please <laughs> let us know what you thought of the year's live streams and what you'd like to see for next year, what we do well, what we don't do so well. Uh, we're always curious to know what you think. Um, and then you might actually get to hang one of these in your tree. Hopefully, we'll, yeah, it, it should be able to make. Depends where you are in the world if you if you'll get <laughs> yeah. it before the the twenty fifth. They um. do look very nice on your desk, though. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> I have a set on my own desk, actually. Right. Yeah, okay. back at the house. Oh, that's what you meant. That's why you <laughs> yeah. meant this little desk. Yeah, this desk, there's that desk. There. Yeah. There's a lot of desks around here. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you all wanted to touch on um, regarding the year, regarding next year? Um, uh, it, it's been a, a crazy year. There's so many good games coming out. We've covered a lot of them. Um, I do want to give uh, one quick mention of the VGAs. I was really excited to see um, Tuke's new game in UE4, uh, the uh, Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance game. All right. Uh, I saw the trailer for that. That looks really awesome. Mm -hmm. There were um, there were so many UE4 titles. I'm, I'm sorry I can't remember them all off the top of my head. Uh, but there's a lot more coming in 2020 that we can't talk about yet. So, coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> um, yeah, it's exciting. Um, if you haven't noticed, we have a very beautiful scene on the background here, um, which is a Yule log video. It's interesting coming from because we don't in Sweden we don't call we call Christmas you know it's Yule, uh, yeah. and so interesting to get that connection. Um, but and we are actually going to make this available on YouTube for you. So if you'd like to play a uh, you know backdrop on the TV um, instead of just watching um, watching shows, you can play a beautiful scene made with Unreal Engine. Um, on behalf of our video production team here. That's very kind of them. Um, mm -hmm. We don't have any marshmallows um, <laughs> to roast on them, um, but we're definitely getting warm in here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sitting in hats and Christmas sweaters. Um, and so I think for today, and this is actually the last live stream of the decade. Yeah. Oh. No ah. pressure. No. Wow. <laughs> And uh, so next year when we're back, it will be a complete new decade. Mm -hmm. And so then it will be the first live stream of the decade, and we can keep going with that. Uh, He's just going to count up for the next 10 years. I'll be like, it's the first one. It's the second, second one. one. No, I'm not going to. Already yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Years, right? Yeah. They just blending together. Um, it's been an amazing year. Thank you all for all of you who tune in weekly. We know there are plenty of you. Um, we're really happy that you spend the time with us. We hope you learned a lot of things this year. Um, I have very, we have very good plans for next year. Um, I can, a, a few of them that I can talk about is, um, I think I might have mentioned that uh, Pasquale, who was one of the designers on the Archivist demo sample, uh, he's actually coming in January. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more coverage of uh, editor improvements in 424. Uh, and then there's one major one in January that I'm not going to announce yet. But stay tuned for. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to do it just yet. But it's exciting. It, it, I'm very excited to have them here in the studio. Uh, and so I'm trying to make everyone else excited too. Um, at the end of January, you'll hear more about that in the beginning of January. Um, and so I think with that, um, we have covered almost everything that we intended to cover today. Um, and so on behalf of all of us here at Epic, we wish you happy holidays and happy new year. 
Uh, but we'd like to leave you with something special. So please stay a while and watch. And we'll see you next year. Goodbye, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Christmas.